how we had, um, here's that you know, weird Unicode stuff that, the, that we just looked at. Separate exploit to target. So basically it's just selecting like which, which shell code do we want to use. So here we build out our shell code. So our uh, virtual address space is going to start at 400000, like, like always in Windows. Um, build out our no ops. And then here's our driver function. Again, we see version checks. So we want to know which, which version has, you know, which version we're on, so we know which exploit to use for targeting which vulnerability. Um, one thing that's interesting is, I, you know, this is all exploiting the same stuff. We saw the uh, collabstore.collect email info exploit in the second uh, PDF, but like they build it out differently in this one. So if you were always checking your PDFs for collabstore.collect email info, and like you were looking for that string, you wouldn't find it in this particular, uh, this particular exploit. It still targets that object and it still gets the code to run, but it's just constructed differently. You know, just think of like the uh, what's the, the C challenge where you're like you, you know you write like the nasty obfuscated C and it does something, but like it does you know it's hard to look at or hard to figure out. Like you're just kind of doing the same thing. You're just changing the way it looks, but you're actually getting to the same same endpoint. Same thing here, targeting the get icon. Um, except it's just referenced a different way. And then uh, this is like our main chunk of code here, calling the, calling the driver function and then setting a timeout. So all in all, pretty easy. Um, I'll skip working through the fourth one, but I just wanted to show you guys. Uh, this was the third one. The, the third and the fourth, um, like I said, the SSD, they had 85% came back, said these, these two files are 85% similar. So when I started pulling apart the fourth one here, like it was like, oh yeah, like I see a bunch of the same stuff. So again, we've got another array, we've got our no op sled function, got our launch exploit function. So it's like almost exactly the same stuff. It just turns out that this fourth PDF was just using different encoding, so it just looked a little bit different. So here's some interesting stuff. Okay, so this is object 26 and 27, right? Now check out this code. We've got an object that sets a, a vari or value of the same name as itself. Um, another variable that sets itself to false, a function that does nothing. This part's interesting. A met need will equals eval. So we've got a, like, almost like a function pointer, basically. Um, some other random variables. And really, out of that, the only thing that we're really concerned about, the only thing that really ma matters in that is that eval. Um, that's it. The other ones, they're just there as distractions. They don't do anything. This function doesn't do anything. This function returns true for no reason. It's just, it's just there as obfuscation. So we saw that assignment of eval. Here's a call to the amet need will. That was the variable that eval was assigned to. Here's a call to that variable. So what this is doing is, um, calling the eval function on this variable look manny dummy. So that's kind of of interest. So we could look through the uh, thing for look manny dummy. And I think what I actually did in cleaning it up is I removed that variable name. Um, and I, I think I just named it something else. But I think initially all of this, this, all this code that we're scrolling through right now was all in one string that was assigned to the variable look, look me dummy. or look many dummy. So it's just, you know, more ways of obfuscation. So that's it for the demo part of the JavaScript stuff, but I have one other thing I wanted to show you guys. Does anybody have any questions about the JavaScript stuff or any of the extraction from PDFs? Yes. You could or you could disable JavaScript in, in your, if you use Adobe Reader or whatever. I know Document Viewer in, uh, in Ubuntu, I don't think it runs JavaScript. Um, and I mean, I guess like the there's a reference available for the PDF standard. I think you have to pay to get the actual like ISO document, but I guess you could always, you know, if you're feeling like open sourcey, you could always build your own as well. But there are al alternative viewers, so.
Well, the, in this case, um, the four files that we just looked at, they would all fail if JavaScript was turned on because they're using JavaScript, JavaScript to exploit the vulnerability. The vulnerability would still exist, but you don't have the deli delivery mechanism to exploit it if you've got JavaScript disabled. Uh, sorry, in the back there. Um, question. Um, I don't, pardon me if it sounds like a stupid question, but um, does the JavaScript interpreter, does it leverage a, the, like a browser's JavaScript interpreter, or is it Adobe Reader's uh, JavaScript interpreter? And to what spec uh, does, to, to what degree does it follow the MCA? Whatever spec does it follow? Um, I, I don't know, because I, I, I don't know, but I, I think that it is like one that's built by uh, reader. I mean, it mainly fought, like we, the JavaScript we looked at all looked very normal. Like I didn't see any really funky stuff that was like that doesn't look like JavaScript. So I think it, it is one built by reader though because I've seen complaints of people it, that make other readers and they're like, oh man, Adobe changed this, and so now we've got to go, you know, update our code to like mirror Adobe's. And so like that makes me think that it's something that Adobe built and embedded. As far as its compliance with whoever wrote the standard on JavaScript, I, I don't know. Okay, I have one more question. Um, dual core, when, when are you guys playing next? Are there any upcoming events that you're going to play at that <laughs> we should know about? Uh, we're playing at, we're playing tomorrow night at uh, 9 o'clock. Um, we're playing PenguinCon in Detroit, and we're playing FragFest in Traverse City, Michigan, and also in May. Uh, yes, you had a question. Doing some, uh, you know, manual work with Notepad plus plus and uh, Didier Stevens' work. Is anyone trying to automate this to kind of like just grab streams, you, um, look at the look at the filters, ran, reverse that, and just kind of get you usable chunks that you can look at one by one without having to do so much legwork? Um, I haven't seen anybody publish online um, any efforts like that, but I do know one person uh, who is uh, working on something to help identify malicious PDF files. Um, so uh, he's working with like avoiding false positives and avoiding false negatives, getting really accurate results to say, yes, this is an actually bad PDF file. Yes? If you're looking into automation, uh, look into the origami framework. OK. Uh, it's Ruby stuff uh, that takes apart PDFs for you, and it just tries to provide a library to do that. Awesome. Thanks, Shardy. In the back. Um, it's, it's more for like a feature rich offering from Adobe. So like for example, one of the things you can do with the PDF is to build a form. Like you could build like an order form. And so you could assign like, you know, dollar cost values to like products and people might be able to fill out their order form. So, you know, you could say like, I want to buy two dual core CDs and a dual core t-shirt. And it would, you know, the form using the JavaScript can calculate, okay, well, dual core CDs are two for 15 and t-shirts are 15 bucks, so your total is 30 bucks. And then it, it can do that, but it can do that because of the JavaScript. And so businesses use it for that, like that's a common purpose of it or common use. Right. I, yeah. As far as I know it does. Right. But we don't do PDF order forms. You can download our, you can pirate our stuff on BitTorrent. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Seriously, you can. <laughs> Any other questions of, on this stuff so far? Okay, cool. So I mentioned um, in the slides that uh, there's a, a new thing, a new research that's been being done um, where you can actually run an application without needing a vulnerability, without needing an exploit, without needing JavaScript, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not anywhere near the forefront of this, but uh, I did code a PDF um, just for proof of concept. So uh, this is our PDF. We're just going to open it and, and fox it. And so it does come up with a warning. and says you're about to run this file, C Windows System 32, command.exe. And you open it, and then it, just for a demo, I just have it ping localhost. You know, nothing, nothing major. But what you can do, the way that, the, that this works, is that um, the back half of it is like shell execute, if anybody's done any Win32 API stuff. So you can pass in like different arguments and stuff like that. So you can chain things. 
Um, some of the cooler stuff that I've seen Didier Stevens do and this other guy, Riot. Um, uh, Didier Stevens can tamper with that warning message that popped up. And so instead of it saying like, hey, you're about to open this file, see Windows, you know, cmd.exe, he can make it say like, hey, here's that encrypted uh, PDF document that I sent you. You know, like, just uh, click the check, bar, uh, the check box, don't show again, and then click open to decrypt the PDF and view the contents. And then his PDF will say, you know, encrypted document or whatever at the top. So there's definitely a social engineering aspect that's employed. But, I mean, if you're expecting a document from somebody or you just, you know, you get a PDF document, like everybody raise their hands, that somebody above them in their org chart is fine opening a PDF document, you know, they're, they're definitely going to open that. And that's going to run, you know, whatever app on the system that is, is built into the thing. And it, there's no warning that that's what's actually going on. Um, one of the things I've seen Riots do is uh, he's got a proof of concept in Foxit where uh, he can open a reader or open up um, the PDF. It doesn't show the warning, um, and, and it just runs a, runs a program. It drops another program and changes the background color. There's a video of it up on YouTube. I think his YouTube is Riot Security or something like that with a Z. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of research going on right now. Um, and this is all like very new stuff. Like I had made the talk initially and I was just like, yeah, JavaScript exploits. Um, but this stuff's pretty new and it's kind of cool. Also scary, I guess, if you're worried about it. But it's kind of neat stuff. Um, so, oh yeah, sorry, we should probably finish out the talk. So here are the references. Um, by all means, please do check out Didier Stevens. I don't think I can shout him out enough. Um, he's a real, real smart dude, publishes a bunch of stuff. He's got a lot of other research outside of PDF stuff. Um, so a lot of cool stuff. Check out the Malzilla app if you have a Windows VM or Windows install. Um, it's really nice, got a lot of features, really helpful for doing PDF stuff. And then if you're interested or you're just an insomniac and you can't go to sleep, check out this PDF reference. It's about as dry as you can get, but it's, it's got like the, most of the core workings in there. Any other questions or anything? Yes. Um, I would think so. I guess I haven't tried, but I would think that Google, Google's uh, document viewer probably doesn't run the JavaScript, you know, and send it out to your browser to run. And even if it did, then you have to have the, your, you have to craft your JavaScript to, to attack the browser at that point or to do stuff not, you know, considering it's running in um, Adobe Reader. Because, you know, what we looked at, they've got heap sprays. They're trying to spray stuff into memory. I don't think the browser is going to really fly with that. Like, or the exploit won't fire. It'll be referencing an object that isn't there. Yes? Right. So um, it, if you've ever written, like a, like, a memory corruption exploit before, like a Stack Overflow, you're using C to, like, or Python or whatever, Ruby. You're using that to load your stuff into memory and overwrite certain registers and values and then jump to where your code's going to execute. This is doing that exact same thing except it's in JavaScript instead of Python or Ruby or C. Right, just to launch an application. And that's just, that is, yeah, yep. So if you've, if you've got like a dropper that already drops and you know that it's going to have downloaded some other file, you could run that file through the PDF if you wanted. Um, but yeah, and that's built into the standard. So it's, it's cool because it doesn't require vulnerability or an exploit. Yes? So as you were doing this research, did you uncover anything from Apache, or I'm sorry, from Adobe that uh, indicates that they're starting to take this seriously and are going to start doing stuff to protect us? Because it just seems like, you know, work that you're talking about and what DDA is doing, it just gets scarier and scarier. Yeah. Um, Adobe's kind of like, the new whipping child right now. Um, their response hasn't been phenomenal, to say, be nice about it. Um, you know, like I said, I, I saw this stuff come through work in 2008, um, and I mean, this stuff's still getting exploited. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I think I think they're trying it to some degree, but if you look at the stats of like the number of attacks that have been going on, and like I've seen graphs where it's like, you know. Like X percentage attacked Flash and X percentage of attacks attacked uh, PDF Reader, it's a, it's a pretty high percentage. I mean, like P, uh, attackers are really focusing on this stuff, 
And so Adobe, I would expect a, a more significant response from Adobe. Yes, Brian. How are um, the uh, antivirus vendors responding to this, if, if at all? Like semantic, trend, Kaspersky, are they even, is this on their radar at all? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I don't really have any contacts with them. Shardy, disclose your, disclose your uh, disclosures. <laughs> I don't believe Shardy. He's Canadian. I'm just kidding. Shardy's awesome. Was there a question over there? Oh, okay. Any other questions? Cool. Thank you guys. My name is Intady. I'm the rapper in Dual Core. <laughs>